Isaac hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. We're doing Eden runs, and so far they've been fine. So far we got very little to complain about. Um, this one, also good actually. 6A9WZRRQ. Rate of fire is terrible, but I mean, all other stats are fine. And can I be 100% honest with you? I can't believe that didn't hit the tinted rock. Um, can I be 100% honest with you? It doesn't matter that much if our rate of fire is bad, unless our damage is also bad. If our rate of fire is bad, but our damage is good, everything is, is pretty okay, to be honest with you. Especially when you got HP. Anyway. Today's Sunday. I had a good weekend. You know, I had an anecdoteless time leading up, as as mentioned, uh, ad nauseum in the previous video. Um, but the weekend was, I mean, Saturday, at least. I guess I can't say the weekend yet, because I wouldn't know. Um, because Sunday is still going here. But Friday and Saturday had a lot of fun. Uh, I I love this. I've, I've insulted Netflix uh, a little bit recently, mostly because they greenlit this terrible show called The Goop Lab, spreading uh, pseudoscience to... Uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, potentially, of naive end-users. Glorifying the, the brand and public image of, uh... A professional manipulator, <laughs> in my opinion. Look, Gwyneth, I... You're, you do a great turn as Pepper Potts. I'm just disappointed that having an incredible, uh... Isaac career was, uh... Or, Isaac career? Incredible acting career was not enough for you. And instead, you had to start selling, uh... Candles that smell like your undercarriage. Anyway, the point is, in spite of that, I do love this modern era of digital distribution that we exist in, where uh, a movie can come out in December, and then it's only in New York and Los Angeles, is playing in eight screens across North America, and then uh, a month later, it's available for streaming on Netflix. And, of course, I'm speaking about Uncut Gems, the Adam Sandler-led Safdie Brothers film. Watched it. Uh, it, it came out Friday on Netflix in, in Canada and the U.S., maybe elsewhere as well. Um, sure, I'll take this. Watched it, and uh, I was like, immediately, it was the same, like, exact feeling I had when I watched Parasite. Where, as I was watching it, I was like, this is amongst my favorite movies of, of 2019. Now, I will say, I still think I like Parasite a little bit more. Maybe even a, a lot more. But, I think Uncut Gems is up there with Midsommar as, like, maybe in my top three movies of 2019, for certain. Um, highly recommended. Great time. I don't know, I, I feel like I'm a weirdo. Because everybody's, like, all the tweets about Uncut Gems are like... It's a panic-inducing, high-octane, anxiety-rich thrill ride. And I'm like, I just was entertained. <laughs> I don't know if that makes me some kind of strange being. But uh, it's the same with Joker. People, were, when they saw Joker, they were like, every frame of the film is so steeped in paranoia that it's an uncomfortable watch. I can't believe I got hit there. I was like, no, I get it, there's unpleasant elements, but it's not like when I was watching it, I was like, my heart was racing, you know? I was just like, watching the movie. Anyway, Uncut Gems, very good, watch that on Friday. On Saturday, I watched the 2018 South Korean film, Burning, and I gotta be honest with you, as much as I like to uh, pretend that I am, you know, uh, I don't want to say an artiste, well, a connoisseur of film. Uh, that movie was honestly good. And above being good in the sense that, like, you know... It, let me put it this way. I was not entertained, but it was thought-provoking. So I, I would have to put that at, like, maybe a... You know, I'm, I'm looking at, like, a two-and-a-half to three-star on that one for me personally. Puberty. Trust me, by the way, when I say that I got it. I just uh, didn't really... Enjoy my time watch is is a slow burn you, some of those slow burns, you know I'm trying to think of some slow burn movies. I enjoy like what one of the examples I have is like and it, it probably maybe at the time when it came out was incredibly exciting um, But now is is paced in a way that is a little bit 
atypical for the modern audience. Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, however, one time I did show it, uh, I was, you know, in, in university, and I was like, yo, have you guys seen The Good, Bad, and the Ugly? You gotta see it. It's one of the greatest films ever made. Clint Eastwood crushes it. The movie opens with like a 10 minute tracking shot of a tumbleweed in the desert more or less. Or a man walking from the right side of the frame to the left side of the frame. My friends were like, I don't want to really see this right now. I was like, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> That's kind of the vibe I got from Burning as well. Where I was like, this, don't get me wrong, it seems great and it's shot masterfully. But at the same time, I was like, I'm just honestly, like, I hate to say it because it makes me look like a neophyte, but I'm just kind of bored. Anyway, uh, but that's, you know, not enough to really put a damper on your weekend. Anytime you're watching a movie, you're having a decent time, right? Most of the time, as long as it's not a Transformers film. Um, apart from that, mostly just like a hung out, you know? It's a... You know, I, I, I got a chance to watch the Canucks games this weekend. Well, not the, there's one going on right now. It's like 11.30 a.m. on Sunday. Um, but I, I got to be honest, I kind of like when the Canucks, which is a West Coast NHL team, travels to the East Coast of North America. They end up playing games. They're always on weekends. And they end up playing these games at like 10 in the morning. So I wake up. Uh, and I go, eh, what am I gonna do? You know, you don't necessarily want to get started, uh, you know, on errands and chores and stuff like that as soon as I wake up necessarily. Oh, there's a Canucks game. It'll be over by 1230 and then I can really start my day. I know, it's, it is a life of leisure. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say, oh, it's so hard. It also is a Saturday, but... Um, I, I kind of like it. Now, I do, I hate it when they lose because I, you know, it builds a narrative for you. You're like, why did I wake up and... The, my normal time to watch this stupid game. How could you? It's an East Coast bias. The NHL plays uh, the Canucks at 10 a.m. local time. When they come to our city, they should be playing at 10 p.m. Yes, I did lose my deal with the devil. That's on me. Though I hate to admit it, it's on me. The run is still good. They were just, you know... Just kind of hung out all day, more or less. It was nice. No complaints. Help me. I forgot we had golden bombs. Should get that out there. Might be able to get a uh, magic mush out of this. But anyway, why are we talking about Isaac? Who cares? <laughs> and later today... Depending on the length of this video, perhaps even right after this video, we'll be starting a new Sunday stream of Dark Souls enemy and item randomizers. Excited to see how it turns out. It's something I've turned up my nose at for a long time. And look, there is some hypocrisy and some irony. One of the things that annoys me is anytime I have an opinion on video games, at least, and you're going to think this is an exaggeration, but it's not really, at least half a dozen people uh, or as normal people say it, six people say, uh, Oh, the guy who's played 3,000 hours of a kid crying in the basement uh, has an opinion. Isn't that cute? They never say that when they agree with my opinion. They go, ah, an industry professional agrees with me. But when they disagree with my opinion, they go, Wow, this guy's played 3,500 hours of Isaac and... Uh, yet he thinks he's entitled to have an opinion of the conversation. One of the reasons I hate it is that... Um, it's overly reductionist, and you know, if you took the most extreme comical example of, of anybody's, you know, history in the gaming hobby, I'm sure you would find similar stuff uh, to make fun of them for. The other thing is, uh, I, I hate it because it's an extreme gotcha. I, every time it happens, I'm got. There's no doubt about that. Where was I going with this? I forgot. Oh, but, yeah, here's the hypocrisy, and this is genuinely, not hypocritical necessarily, but at least a little comical. I'd always, whenever I saw people doing Dark Souls randomizers, I always thought it was kind of, like, boring. Um, 
And I thought it was like, I always think of it like, hey, what if I did an Isaac video where like I played on controller instead of keyboard? Isn't that weird? Then I realized when I watched uh, our good friend Dumb Dog play it. And I think we'll just get out of here, unfortunately. Um, I realize it's actually more exciting than doing a run of real Dark Souls because of the, the random element. So I think I was just being a fool. But that's the spirit of 2020 so far. We're trying new stuff on the regular. I forgot I didn't have golden bombs. And I think it's going to be fun. And if it's not fun, whatever, you know, we'll do something new in a few weeks. The thing, uh, oh, you know what? I bet that's a secret room. Oh, but it looks so much like a secret room. <laughs> the thing is, uh, you know, I think when you're streaming, you gotta remember, and I, we're talking business again, apparently. When you're streaming, you gotta remember, you stream in, uh, in pencil. You're not streaming in pen. You can, you can edit things, you can tinker with them on the fly. If something doesn't work, hey man, if you're left-handed, you might even rub off half of the words by default as you're writing. People don't know that about lefties. The most frustrating part about being left-handed is not, you know, college desks that are, they've got the desk built into the chair, but you can't really use it if you're left-handed, you gotta twist your whole body around. It's not finding pair of scissors that work well. Like, for the most part, being left-handed is exactly the same as being right-handed, I imagine. Um, the most frustrating part is in the situation, which is increasingly rare these days, for me at least, where you're forced to write on a piece of paper. You always smudge the pen or pencil with the heel of your hand. A lot of people don't consider that. If a left-handed person had invented writing in English, we would be writing from right to left. I'm telling you, we, I, I, I bet if you go back in time and you look at, you know, the formation of languages where you write right to left versus left to right, the predominant difference is that uh, the person that was spearheading the project was left-handed or right-handed. I, I fully believe this. Korean, written left to right. Probably a righty. Tried doing it the other way and went, oh, my hand's all dirty. No, my deal with the devil. And we were holding a balls of steel pill. Anyway, I'm not complaining. It's not that bad. Yo, this is a great item as well. I appreciate it. Would not mind uh, beating the odds here. Getting a deal that we don't necessarily deserve, but would appreciate. Anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking about being left-handed. It's not, it's not bad. Being left-handed in school kind of sucked, though, I'll admit. And honestly, in university as well, I did have to sit at many of those desks uh, that were, uh, particularly for exams, you'd have to sit at like a right-handed desk and write on it with your left hand. But most of that was uh, ameliorated by the fact that I grew up in an era where, you know, well, I didn't grow up necessarily, but I went to college in an era where you could just like buy a laptop and then use it. I know I'd just buy a laptop forehead, but I'm saying, you know. Not everybody was taking notes by hand is what I'm trying to say. And there's no left-handed or right-handed laptop. I guess technically there could be, depending on where you position the mouse, but... So yes, I did get the devil deal, and I ignored... I ignored the item, because the item is not that good for us unless we can get other devil items, or, you know, with the... Uh, there are exceptions, I suppose. You can get, like, uh, potato peeler, for example, but I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to bank on that. I would rather just not take the deal, because the deal seemed bad, and then possibly get uh, deals with the angel in the future. That interests me more. But being a kid, I honestly think, um, and I've been thinking about this more often lately, but it's like, you know, why... It's the tabula rasa, like, debate, right? The nature versus nurture debate. Why did I, as a, as a human being, 
become somebody who likes to entertain people. I think that item is an insult. Why did I, um, why did I become interested, you know, in making people laugh? Uh, why didn't I become interested in, you know, woodworking? I'm not, this is not a lament, you know, this is just, oh, careful. Um, it's just thinking. And I, I honestly think that part of the reason, I'm, I'm being completely sincere when I say this, it might sound idiotic and thus might be idiotic, or it might sound idiotic and be genius. But I honestly think part of the reason that I don't, I have not found myself in a career where I work with my hands is because I'm left-handed. And I'm not saying lefties are worse at it, but, you know, what's your first, uh, that's such a good get for us there. Um, what's your first introduction to working with your hands as a child? Arts and crafts, right? Arts and crafts as a lefty, not saying it's impossible, but I think you face a larger barrier to entry than uh, a right-handed classmate would. The scissors don't work right. They always, uh, you know, the, if you're right-handed, they give you scissors that are like, you know, hey, look at this, it's crisp. We had them sharpened a Canadian tire recently. They cut so well. Then if you're left-handed, there's one pair of left-handed scissors in a class of 30 people. Uh, and they were built, you know, with recycled iron from old Canadian guns from the Second World War. They're all rusted out, and there's three left-handed kids in a class of 30. So you don't even get to use them that much. But that's okay, because they don't cut anyway. They just sort of fold the paper, leave a crease in it. You're drawing with crayon, you're smudging the crayon. You're drawing with marker, you're smudging the marker. So I th this will make you laugh, but I had, I had three dream professions when I was in junior kindergarten. One of them was an astronaut, and I think that that's a, a fairly common, you know, dream career for a child, or an adult for that matter. As an adult, that one, it, it's not well suited for me. I would, I mean, it's not well suited for me because I'm not qualified for one, but also it sounds bad. Like, the duties of being an astronaut sound bad. Yes, you get to experience the, you know, incomparable majesty of, you know, seeing the Earth from the outside, which I imagine is life-changing. Um, but on the other hand, you also spend a lot of your time on a, you know, glorified tin can with the persistent specter of potential catastrophic failure. Um, you, you spend a lot of time away from your family. Claustrophobic. Uncomfortable bowel movements, etc, etc. It's not for me. Another one was a taxi driver. Um, which was just... You know, I got nothing against it, but... I actually think I would, I would enjoy... Driving for, for like, taxi or Uber or Lyft. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I don't want to do it, but... I, I think that the duties of the job, I would find reasonably... Pleasant. I don't mind driving. In fact, I would go a step further and say most of the time I kind of like driving. I like getting a greater sense of the city that I live in as well. And I would not be an Uber driver that talks to people. I'll tell you that much. I would. I would. I would be silent. And it would be my music, not your music. If you want to rate me down for that, well, then you're a traitor to the gig gig economy, as far as I'm concerned. I was gonna say confused, which is also fair. The third job was an artist. Now, you've seen me in, you know, Pinterio. I am not a good artist. In fact, I would describe myself as possibly amongst the worst artists in our group. I am incapable of translating an image from my head into an image that is representative of it on paper. But part of that is because as soon as I went to primary school, elementary school, I was like, you know what? I have no longer have... Uh, I have no aptitude nor desire for this. And I think part of it is due to left-handedness, to be honest. Now, maybe I should be counting my blessings. You know, I, I, I can trace a lot of the other personality traits that I have to my upbringing, which I think is, is very common. But, you know, I grew up as an only child. I spent a lot of time by myself. I said by myself instead of alone, because I enjoyed it. If you say you spent a lot of time alone, people are like, aw. But if you're like, I spent a lot of time, you know, I had a lot of freedom. People are like, oh. Hold on, let me see what we got up here. 
Um, so, you know, I watched a lot of media. I think watching a lot of media made me be like, oh, this is what I, you know, I, I, I built up a, a referential sense of humor as a result of that. And uh, here we are, you know. It's not like, and you know, I'm tooting my own horn here. I'm not saying necessarily I have the best sense of humor, but I think I have a good sense of humor. I'm not saying I have that because I watch reruns of WKRP on Cincinnati, but maybe because I, you know, watch those reruns. That led to me, like, you know, having a, a joke in the hopper that played well to my circle of friends, which led me to be like, oh, you know, please. <laughs> Being rewarded for that felt nice, and I'd like to structure my life to get more of that feeling in the future. You know what I mean? We'll take a little brim. Slightly spiced run. None of that is worth it. And we'll leave. But I can I think you can also trace a lot of the a lot of my I don't want to call them inadequacies necessarily but a lot of my I'll, I'll call them deficiencies but I mean it in like the sense that a building has a deficiency not the way deficiency is normally used like it's useless you know like your building might have a deficiency because you know oh the blinds are old that doesn't mean they don't function you know it just means something maybe to look out for in the future like my my dad is a he's a handy guy. Oh, thank you, Infamy. Uh, and my my grandfather, my dad's dad, was a very handy guy as well. So, you know, when my dad was growing up, he helped my grandfather with his business, which was like you know involved in contracting. Um, so my dad learned the trade. And was kind of forced by economic reasons to help out his dad with the business for cheap slash free labor, right? On the other hand, when I grew up, anytime my dad had a project, he had like the desire to teach me how to do it. But then when I failed it early because I had no natural aptitude for it and also I was a child, he was like, ah, you know what, just give me the hammer and I'll do it. And because I was a kid, I was like, yeah, go ahead. I don't want to do this anyway, I just want to play Mega Man X. <laughs> so I was enabled, and I'm not blaming him. I think I was raised very well by my parents, and this is the kind of stuff you can only see, you know, in hindsight. But uh, I was enabled in some way to never learn those skills um, by by the unique... And I'm not saying unique is in one of a kind, but I just mean, you know, everybody's got a unique upbringing. I think about that sometimes. Obviously, like, as an adult, or as, as, let me put it this way, as a childless adult, I think you go like, well, it would have been better if he had forced you to actually learn how to do it, not like in an aggressive way, but, you know, by, by allowing you the space to actually experiment with it and learn, maybe you would have actually grown those skills. That's true, but, like, you know... At the same time, he's a human being too, you know, he's he's hungry, <laughs> he's, uh, he's got two days off from work and he's trying to, you know, re-grout the tile in the bathroom and this is really putting a damper on it and all of a sudden we might not even be done by dinner time now. Just go ahead and let me do what you tried, thanks a lot. I can understand that. Yo, two luck upgrades? I'm a happy man. Anyway, it's just it's just stuff I've been thinking about, you know, trying to derive how I got to be the person that I am, because I think I do have kind of a a unique uh, perspective on it, on on life. Shouldn't have stood there. I don't know if this is true, but it's it's like a hunch I have. I feel like both for better and for worse. Only children have a greater chance to be to have a weird perspective on issues. Because I never had, like, uh... And I, I do mean for better and for worse. Because I think as an adult, having a unique perspective is cool. But also, my unique perspective is not... Like, I'm not a big weirdo. <laughs> I'm, like, a little weirdo in the sense that it... People are like, oh, he's slightly, um... What's the word I'm looking for? You know, he, he has some unique characteristics and perspectives, but on the other hand, he's not, uh, you know, like, asocial, antisocial, you know, it, he knows how to speak to people without being offensive, you know, you get the idea. Sometimes, you know, when you have an only child, you're like, oh, they have a unique perspective, you know, they, 
believe in indefensible conspiracy theories or something like that. But I got lucky, you know. I I think I became uh, I became I had a novel perspective on the world without it moving into you know nobody wants to talk to this guy territory, which I'm very thankful for. But I think if you you know you're you're more like I don't know if this is true. This is my hunch. I feel like you're more likely to grow up with like a a sanded off perspective of the world and, and opinions on issues and stuff like that if you have siblings. Just because there's someone to tell you your dumb ideas are dumb or not how the world works. Whereas uh, for me, if I got like an opinion on something, I can't believe we dodged that. I was like, well, there's nobody here to tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so I'll just... Not necessarily keep believing ignorant stuff, but you know. I think it allows you to be uh, more confident in in innocuous but baseless opinions. You know what I mean? Because I think about that, you know, my wife has an older sister. She's like six years older than her. Somewhere in that camp. And... Um, you know, I see that sometimes in their relationship. This is a little spice. Just give me a second here. Where I'm like the the older sister, my sister-in-law, who is a nice person. I'm not trying to insult her. I think it's just, you know, it's the it's the family dynamic of the situation. Full health. Paralysis. Yikes. Um but she feels like, she has the role of being, like, the guide for the younger sister, which is something I can't relate to. Because I have not had an older or a younger sibling, right? So, like, sometimes Kate will say something and the older sister will be like, I don't think that's how that works. I did not have that in my life. And, and I, I, for better and for worse. <laughs> I think instead, if I thought that was the way something worked, I, like, you know, Googled it. Sometimes that led to uh, greatness, and sometimes it led to oblivion. Otherwise, you know, I don't necessarily believe in, like, the the idea that, like, all oh, your personality is dictated by... Oh, we need that. Um, you know, oh, are you the middle child? Where, well, middle children tend to be, you know, blah, blah, and, you know, older siblings tend to be blah, blah. I don't necessarily, like, buy any of that. But maybe a little I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that not because I think I can gauge when people are, you know, have siblings, but because people really seem to have me pegged as an only child. Like, I get asked all the time. People don't ask me the question, they ask other people. Where they go, oh, do you have uh, brothers or sisters? They always go, are you an only child? And then I say, yeah, and they go, I thought so. Anyway. But I don't, I don't necessarily, I think not having siblings definitely does have an effect. I think it had an effect on my personality combined with the fact that I grew up, you know, in the country. So, um, you know, it's not like I, every day I wasn't like interacting with my friends like after school. It was really like a once a week sort of thing. I think spending so much time alone as a child led me to idiosync... Crassity? Idiosynchronicity? It led me to be the character you see in front of you today. And I'm thankful for that. Anyway. I don't know how I got off on this subject. Got onto this subject. Probably a much better way to phrase that. You know what's exciting, though? It appears we actually will win this run. <laughs> Mere moments ago. Things looked quite dire. Now, I might even say they look downright radiant. I don't think we played very well on this run at all. But I think we got just... In fact, I would say this is one of the worst played runs I've had over the past month or so. But, you know, it just goes to show you. Isaac success is a composite between skill and luck. Like, honestly, did we make mistakes on the keeper run? That we lost the streak on? Yes. But, what did we play better on? That keeper run or this run? The keeper run, a thousand percent. 
However, this run is much more comfortable to get to the finish line just because we didn't random uh, the keeper. Because <laughs> we're eating. Anyway, and we're eating good. Send it, by the way. Thank you. Uh, and we will leave. I would like a good item here, though, to be honest. I, uh, I mean, that's a great item. I can't really complain. We were saddled with a subpar spacebar item almost the entirety of the game. That's the only negative that was outside of my control. And we might have been able to get some deals with the devil to make it work, but whatever. It is what it is. There's just something... It, it, I think it's a like a, a perception thing, right? But there's something annoying about being on the chest when a win is guaranteed, but also kind of slightly underpowered, where you're like, come on. You know I'm going to win. I know I'm going to win. Just give me something that makes that win come a little faster. Instead of, you know, taking forever. Anyway. I'm excited for this upcoming week as well. You know, more good video game releases. That's really about it. Going to the gym. <laughs> and then slowly working our way through February to get to the months that actually uh, matter. Not to insult February, especially it's a leap year February. Can I run something controversial by you? I think... You, you might disagree with me on this one. I don't think you will, though, because I'm going to advocate for having more time off. I think February the 29th should be a, a government holiday. Let me explain myself, okay? For one, it's not that common. It comes once every fourth year, uh, four years, and then, like, occasionally... Once every 100 or 400 years, you don't uh, you don't get that one. So would it be annoying to figure out uh, when you get it off and when you don't? Very slightly, but it's the same thing for like Thanksgiving and Easter. You know, they're not always on the same day. You got to consult the farmer's almanac to figure out when it is. Um, Moreover, I'm not suggesting that no work gets done on February 29th. Keep in mind, sometimes I guess it would be on a Saturday or something. So that, that causes a problem. Okay. But, you know, five out of seven leap years will have it happening on a weekday. I don't think necessarily it's a huge problem. But, administratively, and I'm, I'm honestly looking at this from like a software development standpoint... Things happening on a day that is an irregular date that only happens once every four years could cause problems. Obviously, I'm assuming it doesn't really because of the fact that, you know, we've had like 10 leap years since the invention of the date time uh, data type. <laughs> and, it, you know, but I always, you know, here's what gets me is that I and I was guilty of thinking about this as well. Uh, and, and thinking this is the case until I, it was, I was educated otherwise. I had always been under the impression that people were um, afraid of Y2K and then on January 1st, the year 2000, nothing went wrong and thus the people who were afraid were wasting their time. They're like, oh, how stupid that we would be afraid of stuff like that. Only recently did I discover the real story, which is that for, like, years leading up to the new millennium, tens of thousands of software engineers were contracted to, like, retrofit systems. I guess it's more like future-proof systems, but to future-proof systems so that they wouldn't catastrophically fail on Y2K. So it's like... I had always thought that this was kind of like a failed doomsday hypothesis. Where it was like, oh, people, the same thing as people predicting like, oh, the judgment day is going to happen. Or like, you know, an asteroid's going to hit the earth or whatever. And instead it turns out that it actually like 
billions of man hours were put into it in order to prevent it from happening in the first place. I, I feel like I was sold a lie. This video goes out to all those hardworking programmers who did not get the appropriate um, kudos for their actions. And instead have been, you know, relegated to the... I don't know where I'm going. Suffice it to say, big ups to you guys for saving the planet. <laughs> and nobody remembers. At least in Deep Impact, when they use the spaceship to collide with the uh, asteroid in order to keep it from crashing into the Earth, the guy said, at least they're going to name a high school after us. You didn't even get a high school's named after you. Y2K has just become an ignorant joke. Let me out. We won. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!